A vast land, ancient and sacred. Rivers flowing like veins of time. Beneath the soil of India, secrets sleep, untouched for millennia. Temples crumble, scripts vanish, but the echo of something older, something forgotten, still pulses in the dust. For centuries, scholars wondered, who built the first cities of India? Where did they come from? Were they invaders, natives, or something else entirely? In the arid plains of the Indus Valley, ruins whisper of a lost world. Harappa, Mohenjo-Daro, cities built with precision, order, and mystery. But their creators left no clear trace, no written legacy, no known descendants, just stones and silence. Until now, a single tooth, buried deep beneath layers of ancient sediment, extracted analyzed, and then everything changed. Hidden within its decayed core was a code, a fragment of DNA untouched by time, a molecular time capsule waiting to be unlocked. What it revealed would challenge everything we thought we knew about India's first civilizations. Was the truth buried all along beneath our feet, or has it been deliberately hidden for thousands of years? One question remains, who were the true founders of ancient India? Over 4,500 years ago, long before the pyramids reached for the skies or the Great Wall stretched across China, an advanced civilization thrived along the banks of the Indus and Sarasvati rivers. Known today as the Indus Valley Civilization, it sprawled across what is now Pakistan, northwest India, and eastern Afghanistan. With more than 1,000 known sites and an estimated population of over 5 million, it was one of the largest and most sophisticated urban cultures of the ancient world. Streets were aligned with geometric precision, homes had indoor plumbing, and cities were connected through vast trade networks. Yet despite this grandeur, one of history's greatest mysteries still haunts archaeologists and historians, we don't know who these people were. Unlike Egypt and Mesopotamia, the Indus left behind no deciphered written records. Their language remains a code we cannot break. Their burial customs, religious beliefs, and even ethnic identity remain elusive. Did they emerge independently? Or were they part of a larger migration, a forgotten branch of humanity's spread across the ancient world? Theories range from local origin stories to Aryan invasions, but without genetic evidence, all remained speculation. Until a recent breakthrough in ancient DNA technology changed everything. The past, once silent, was about to speak. Not in words, but in sequences of nucleotides. It began in a quiet field near the village of Rakagari, in the northern state of Haryana, India. At first glance, it looked like any other archaeological site. Mounds of dirt, scattered shards of pottery, the faint outlines of buried walls. But beneath that soil lay something extraordinary. In 2012, archaeologists unearthed a burial site, a skeleton lying in a narrow pit, perfectly aligned, surrounded by broken ceramic vessels. Unlike most other remains found in the region, this one was unusually well-preserved. The teeth, in particular, were intact, sealed like vaults guarding a molecular treasure. Years passed. Samples were carefully extracted and sent to specialized labs. DNA degrades quickly in hot, humid climates. And for years, India's ancient remains had yielded almost nothing usable. But this time was different. Against all odds, scientists recovered a viable strand of ancient DNA from the woman's molar, the first ever successfully sequenced genome from the Indus Valley civilization. It was a breakthrough the scientific world had been waiting for. Inside that fragment lay clues to a civilization that had remained faceless for centuries. The questions resurfaced with new urgency. Would her DNA finally expose the identity of the Indus people? 
Were they connected to today's Indian populations? Or did they represent a lost branch of humanity? The ancient DNA was fragile, degraded, fragmented, contaminated by time. But a team of geneticists and archaeologists from India, South Korea, and Harvard joined forces, determined to extract every possible secret from the sample. Led by geneticist David Reich and archaeologist Vasant Shindi, the researchers employed cutting-edge techniques, high-throughput sequencing, contamination filtering, and comparative genome analysis. It took years of meticulous work. Data had to be cross-checked, matched against hundreds of modern and ancient populations, and stripped of noise. The goal was simple. Identify the woman's genetic ancestry and through her, the genetic signature of an entire civilization. But roadblocks emerged. Many samples from other Harappan sites had failed due to heat and exposure. Political tensions also cast shadows over the work, as interpretations of India's ancient past are deeply tied to national identity and cultural pride. Every result carried potential controversy. Was the civilization indigenous or shaped by migrations? The implications were enormous. Meanwhile, the genome whispered its secrets, piece by piece. And as the data took shape, a startling pattern emerged. This woman shared no ancestry with steppe pastoralists, the group long associated with the Aryan migration theory. Nor did she match the genetic profiles of early Iranian farmers. Instead, her DNA pointed to something older, much older. The data was undeniable. When the genome of the Rakhigari woman was finally mapped and compared to ancient and modern populations, one revelation shattered decades of assumptions. Her DNA showed a unique mixture of ancestry from ancient South Asian hunter-gatherers and early Iranian agriculturalists, but with no detectable trace of steppe ancestry. This was seismic. For decades, the dominant theory held that the Indus Valley civilization was either founded or heavily influenced by Indo-Aryan migrants from Central Asia, a narrative rooted in linguistic, cultural, and textual clues. But here, in the bones of a woman buried thousands of years ago, was the clearest evidence yet that the Harappans were not outsiders. They were rooted in the subcontinent. The DNA matched most closely with modern South Indian tribal groups and with the so-called ancient ancestral South Indians, a genetic lineage long debated but now confirmed. Even more astonishing, this ancient genome predates the arrival of steppe ancestry in India by nearly 1,000 years. That means India's first urban civilization was not built by invaders, but by indigenous people, sophisticated, organized, and genetically distinct. The story we thought we knew was wrong, and the truth had been locked inside a single molar for over four millennia. Imagine the scene 4,600 years ago. The monsoon rains fed mighty rivers, the Indus to the west, and the now vanished Sarasvati to the east. Along their banks rose cities unlike any the world had seen Mohenjo-daro, Harappa, Dolavira, urban marvels with grid planned streets, public baths, reservoirs, and granaries. These were not warrior kingdoms. There are no grand palaces no towering statues of kings. Instead, order and uniformity reigned, suggesting a culture governed by trade, water management, and civic organization rather than conquest. Now, we know who these builders were. The genome from Rakagari reveals that they descended from a deep blend of South Asia's first hunter-gatherers and West Asian farmers who migrated thousands of years earlier. Over time, these groups mixed, settled, and developed new technologies, metallurgy, standardized weights, and long-distance commerce. This fusion sparked the rise of the Harapans, an indigenous civilization born from the land itself. They traded with Mesopotamia, 
crafted intricate seals, built drainage systems rivaling modern cities. But then it ended. Climate shifts, river patterns changing, the monsoon weakening. One by one, the cities were abandoned, not with war, but with silence. The people didn't vanish. They moved, migrated south and east, blending into future populations. Their legacy encoded not in monuments, but in our very blood. The DNA hidden in an ancient tooth has rewritten history. It tells a story not of invasion, but of evolution, not of conquerors, but of creators. India's first great civilization, once lost in the dust of time, has now spoken through the language of genes. And what it said was clear. The Harappans were not strangers. They were native to the subcontinent. Their blood flows in millions of people today, every drop a living echo of the ancient past. The Aryan migration, once thought to be the root of India's culture, was only a chapter, not the beginning. The real beginning lies deeper, older, more complex, and more Indian than ever imagined. This is not just about ruins or bones, it's about identity, origins, and the power of science to uncover truths long buried beneath layers of myth and memory. If this revelation surprised you, imagine what else might still be hidden beneath our feet. How many more secrets lie locked inside the genomes of the forgotten? The ancient world is not dead. It's sleeping in the dust, in the stones, and in us. If this story blew your mind, don't forget to like, subscribe, and explore our other videos uncovering the mysteries of humanity's deep past. The truth is out there, and we're just beginning to find it.